So, um, this is Mazzy. Nice to see you. Uh, I've been sick the last few days, so that's uh, inspired me to do this video, something I've wanted to do in a while. This is a movie about films, and it's about films, movies, that I recall that I used to play when I was a kid or a teenager when I was home that's sick in bed, home from school, and there used to be... Um, you know, my generation growing up, there was, what, three, four, five channels, maybe uh, three network affiliates, a uh, PBS station, a couple uh, VHS, UHF, UHF stations, and they'd show all movies in the afternoon or in the mornings, and you'd see all these black and white movies like uh, Danny Kaye movies and, um, well, some of the things I've shown here, a lot of comedies over and over and over again, so... It was actually a good time growing up to see some old films. I've done some films or some uh, videos here on uh, some of my favorite foreign films and independent films. I love that. But they're just basic films, most mostly American, I think, uh, that I uh, grew up with. And I have these box sets and individual DVDs, and I thought I'd showcase it here. I'm doing this now because um, the last couple of days I've been sick. Um, I'm okay, <laughs> and because of this... Uh, pandemic period where we are. This is being taped on the 17th of July, year 2020. Um, you got to be cautious. And so I went online with my medical uh, facility and did all the back and forth texting or, or uh, and they advised me to go to the urgent care. So it turns out I have some kind of infection. Luckily, it wasn't serious, nothing, nothing COVID related. But uh, I'm on medication, antibiotics. They did a drip for me for several hours. So I'm fine. Nothing serious. Uh, there was a little scare for a while that it could have been, but um, it's funny. But it's, it's funny that it's, it's not funny, but it's funny that it's not sick. But um, if I read, got up in the news today, read the news today, oh boy, and 77,000 new corona cases yesterday. 77,000 in America alone. Wear a mask. The fucking governor of Georgia is suing uh, one of the mayors of Georgia, Georgia cities, Atlanta, because they're trying to mandate wearing a mask. Wear a mask now, stay at home. This is serious. You know, I don't know why it's become this political issue, what it's a medical issue. Anyway, here are the movies I'm going to showcase, and um, I'll tell a little bit about them, but just why I like them. I'm going to start with this one, because one of my all-time favorite movies, The Adventures of Robin Hood. And Errol Flynn is one of my favorite swashbuckler actors. This is in the late 30s, I believe, this movie came out. Errol Flynn and Olivia de Havilland with Basil Rath Rathbone and Claude Rains. Claude Rains, uh, you might remember as the uh, the police lieutenant in Casablanca. He was the original Invisible Man. Uh, Basil uh, Basil Rathbone uh, in the early movies in the 30s, also in the, into the 40s, was um, probably one of the first of the Sherlock Holmes. Uh, so. It's a great period where I think there's now a generation, several generations that have no idea who these uh, actors uh, or films are. Great Technicolor motion picture, uh, vibrant colors, really just a great, great film. The Adventures of Robin Hood. Okay, a series of films, you know, the road pictures. The road pictures with... Um, Bob Hope and Bing Crosby. These are always fun. The two of them work together. They're musicals. They're upbeat. We have The Road to Utopia. Not one of the better ones. The Road to Singapore. The Road to Morocco. These are always good. And The Road to Zanzibar. I think Dor Dorothy Lamour was in several of them too, but uh, just fun, fun movies uh, to watch. So these are good movies. Kick home, you're stuck at home maybe, you know, search them out, stream them, however you want to find them, and uh, you'll enjoy them. They're great. They're feel-good movies. Now, the movie musicals of 20th Century Fox are, are just classic, and now these are so upbeat, so colorful. Uh, Busby Berkeley, like Busby Berkeley, I don't know if he worked on these, but yeah. Busby Berkeley was a choreographer director that made all these amazing films in the 30s uh, with dance sequences and over the top sets and things in Hollywood. But we're going with the Carmen Miranda Connection, collection. 
and you all know that she was the one that wore those giant <laughs> fruit baskets in her in her head. But they're so worth uh, watching and watching these Busby Berkeley dance sequence with with like a, a hundreds hundreds of bananas going up and down. There's a certain phallic uh, quality to these, but. The gang's all here, Busby Berkeley, with little Carmen Miranda's in it. I mean, she's not always the main feature of these movies. Uh, Something About the Boys, uh, Carmen Miranda, Michael O'Shea, and Vivian Blaine. If I'm Lucky, Harry James, a great big band uh, trumpet player, band leader, uh, has some of the music on here. Perry Como, Carmen Miranda, Vivian Blaine. Greenwich Village, such great Technicolor films, wonderful to watch. Don Amici's in this one. <laughs> Who's Don Amici, you ask? And um, Dollface. Dennis O'Keefe, Barry Como, Carmen Miranda, and Vivian Blaine again. But um, great of the Hollywood heyday, uh, great musicals. Always worth watching, you know? You're sick of the shit that you that's on Netflix, dig deep down. Netflix and Prime, if you search, you might find some of these on some of those uh, channels as well. Now, I remember as a kid watching these movies, Mom, Pa, Kettle, series of movies with uh, was it Marjorie, what's her name? I, I don't remember her name. Anyway, uh, this has uh, one, two, three, four, four, the Egg and I, The Further Adventures of Ma and Pa Kettle, Mom and Pa Kettle Go to Town, Mom and Pa Kettle Back on the Farm, the franchise collection. Mom and Pa Kettle lived, it was almost like early Beverly Hillbillies, but it wasn't fish out of water so much. But they were funny films. Uh, these were done, I guess, in the late 30s as well. I don't have the exact dates on these. But Mom and Pa Kettle, Mom and Pa Kettle, come on. Open your... Expand your horizons, Mom Pa Kettle. Some of the funniest people in the world were the Marx Brothers. Groucho Marx is a, a, a favorite of mine, and all the Marx Brothers. So we got Night at the Opera, Day at the Races. Where do you think the Queen got the name for their movies? The Queen. Queen. Night in Casablanca. And monkey business. I could watch these films over and over again. Marx Brothers films, hysterical. Watch a Marx Brothers film this weekend. Again, when I was a kid, the movies that I probably first got attached to, and, I'd, and they'd scare the shit out of me, and looking back, they're not scary movies. But they're in black and white. They're beautiful. Again, in the 30s, um, were the Universal monster movies. Boris Karloff, Frankenstein. Directed by James, the great James Whale. There's a movie bio, I think, on him that's really interesting. Um, Frankenstein. Then there is The Bride of Frankenstein. The Wolfman. This, to me, was one of the scariest for some reason, because it, it's about this innocent that, you know, gets bitten and turns into a wolf. And Lon Chaney Jr. plays this character. He played it in several movies, just plays it beautifully. And um, you really believe how how frightened he is. It's, it's really a psychological thriller as well as a horror film. Um, but great, great movie. Bela Lugosi's in it too, uh, recreating his role. I don't have it here, actually. Dracula with Bela Lugosi. Unfortunately, it's not at hand. Then also, Boris Karloff played The Mummy. This is also a very scary uh, film. But Boris Karloff, Lon Chaney Jr., Bela Lugosi uh, were the universal uh, monster actors for many years in the late 30s. 30, um, but these are great movies. Directed by uh, Karl Freund. And then, uh, as I said... The Invisible Man, and um, this is with Claude Rains, uh, the actor from Casablanca and several other movies. But uh, again, a great, great, great film, Invisible Man. I think these hold up 
obviously we're now used to CG and special effects and everything you can do, but what they did with matte paintings and um, effects in the way that are more analog based is just amazing. The Warner, excuse me, the Universal Monster Movies. Now in another different direction, one of my favorites too as a kid was Ray Harryhausen. Um, I loved Ray Harryhausen because also I loved Gumby. I loved stop motion action figures. Uh, Art Clokey made the Gumby cartoons, Gumby and Pokey, the little bendy. Uh, Ray Harryhausen did um, 20,000, did he work on 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea? I think he worked on that. Is it 20,000 Leagues? Some, some thousand Leagues. Uh, the Beast from 5,000 Fathoms, um, It, he worked on so many films, but he worked on uh, the Sinbad films. So you got Sinbad in the Eye of the Tiger, that's the later one. The Golden Voyage of Sinbad, and the Seventh Voyage of Sinbad. Um, so Ray Harryhausen uh, was the one who really invented and stopped, started using all those creatures where you do frame at a time, and move the bendable clay uh, creatures. And there's a great documentary out on Ray Harryhausen. I suggest uh, you look at it. An important uh, figure in animation and cinema. Um, amazing, amazing uh, person. Uh, Jason and the Argonauts was probably the movie that really got me into that. It's probably the best movie uh, of these type of movies, Jason and the Argonauts. So check that out. Uh, Ray Harryhausen did the stop motion on it. And the Sinbad films. Now, something lighter and so fun, the Thin Man series. Um, William Powell and Myrna Loy, there was a whole series of these. Um, they were fun-loving detectives that, you know, lived in New York and lived on the town and would have their cocktails. In fact, there's a glass that I've shown in some of my videos, a specific martini glass. It's called a Nick and Nora, and it's because... Nick and Nora, Nora especially, would always be seen at parties and things with a martini. That was a big part of their uh, their thing. Plus, they had a, a dog named Asta, which was a big part of it all. So, we, I just watched these about a year ago, and they're fabulous. The Thin Man, they're detective films with just upbeat funny. The Thin Man Goes Home. Song of the Thin Man. Nick and Nora. After the Thin Man, Another Thin Man, and Shadow of the Thin Man. Uh, just a great series of films. They make you feel good. And, you know, get, a, get away from the big blockbusters right now and, and watch one of these movies. I'm going to keep saying that until this video is over. Okay, we're winding down here. Um, now... I was hesitant to show this because it's not very it's not politically correct at all. But these are interesting films. They're fun films. They're detective films like the Nick and Nora films. So they're more serious. Um, but, um, you know, take it however you want. The Charlie Chan films. Now, the controversy in these is that Charlie Chan was played by a white man. And... Um, so there's Charlie Chan in London, Charlie Chan in Paris, Charlie Chan in Egypt. Charlie Chan gets around a lot. Charlie Chan in Shanghai, and a Spanish language version, Iran Terese, Treche. And then Charlie Chan at the circus, Charlie Chan at the opera, Charlie Chan at the racetrack, Charlie Chan at the Olympics. You see where we're going with this. It's all Charlie Chan. Uh, number one son was played by an Asian actor. So, um... You know, there is commentary all, on all these films, and um, it gets into the whole thing about a Caucasian actor uh, playing a, a Chinese character, and uh, obviously things have changed, and uh, I still love these movies, you know, I'm not going to, I don't think it's right to go back and change everything, and, you know, there's a certain uh, restoration you could do, or revisitation, and uh, these are a part of history. I get the controversy, and I get how some people are upset about these, but uh, I do love these films, Charlie Chan, and I watched them as a kid. I, I, we didn't think badly. We just thought of actors playing a part, but I get uh, how things are different now. 
getting a little more modern, the last two things, well, it goes back and forth. Um, this goes to the 70s into the 80s, and this is the, uh, Blake Edwards, The Pink Panther. Blake Ed Edwards directed all these movies with uh, fabulous Peter Sellers. Peter Sellers is one of my favorite comedians, actors, um, just an amazing, amazing artist, uh, tempestuous in a way, but him and the Kubrick films and Lolita and uh, Dr. Strangelove, I love being there. Uh, that's one of the greatest movies of, uh, was that in the 70s or 80s? Uh, but being there is a fabulous movie, but Peter Sellers, a wonderful record. The, the parts he plays in Stanley Kubrick's version of Lolita, I think the first half of that film, or first two thirds is perfect. Gets a little long, falls apart. Um, but uh, Peter Sellers uh, plays this double role in that, and it's, and it's just fabulous. Like in Dr. Strangelove, he plays um, uh, Dr. Strangelove and the president, and, he's, and he plays three parts, and he plays a, a lieutenant commander uh, in the military, the British uh, commander. One of my favorite movies, Dr. Strangelove. But anyway, the, Peter, the Pink Panther movies starts with the Pink Panther a Shot in the Dark, I think, might be the first one I ever saw when I was a kid. Pink Panther Strikes Again, Revenge of the Pink Panther, Trail of the Pink Panther. So again, these start in the 60s, right? I was wrong about that. So uh, Pink Panther. And then lastly, uh, just because I've been on a Alfred Hitchcock binge, this is a fabulous uh, Blu-ray collection. And this is a lot, not all, but a lot of uh, his greater Hollywood movies. The fabulous movie Shadow of a Doubt uh, with Joseph Cotton and Teresa Wright. Rope with uh, Jimmy Stewart and um, Farley Granger and John Dahl. And that's the one that's technically one shot. Um, it's one panning shot, one handheld, well, not really handheld, but one shot. And obviously when they have to cut because of the film roll ends, uh, it stops behind a wall or a bookcase or something, and then it shifts into the next reel. Uh, interesting film, uh, interesting like, uh, it's a, it's a it's a mystery suspense mystery, a who done it, a rear window, the great rear window with the beautiful um, Jimmy Stewart and Grace Kelly. The beautiful they're both beautiful they're all beautiful. But Grace Kelly oh when she enters the scene for the first time and leans in when uh, James Stewart's in a wheelchair he's wheelchair bound and he's watching uh, what goes on. Uh, out of his rear window in the courtyard of the various apartment buildings there. Great record, had a great uh, movie. Trouble with Harry, kind of a light romp. Um, it's with John Forsythe, uh, Shirley MacLaine's debut as an actor. Uh, the Man Who Knew Too Much, which I just watched again, which is pretty good, Doris Day and Jimmy Stewart. Vertigo, of course we all know Vertigo, and if you don't, you should. Uh, North by Northwest was a great movie I just watched. Um, mainly because uh, the big finale is at um, is in North Dakota at Mount Rushmore, and uh, we know what happened at Mount Rushmore recently. Psycho scared the shit out of me. I saw it with my parents um, at a drive-in movie theater. Oh my God, Psycho and the birds. I, that scared the shit out of me, especially when the woman they did a quick close-up when her eyes are plucked out from those birds. Marnie with Sean Connery, Torn Curtain, Alfred Hitchcock, Julie Andrews, Topaz, Frenzy, and uh, Family Plot, which is not a great movie at all. But um, this is a, a great collection. If you're a Hitchcock fan, I would say uh, this might be the best bang for your buck. Beautifully mastered, beautiful version on Blu-ray of Alfred Hitchcock. So some of these movies are what I'm going to watch while I'm homesick this weekend in bed. And, um, you know... Open your uh, eyes and, and get into some of these old uh, fantastic films. So, Mazzy loves you. Take care, VC.